What you see here is the HTC Windows Phone 8X. And it's a great device, but we're actually not going to be reviewing the device itself today. We're going to be looking at the Windows Phone 8 operating system that sits on it. Now, this will not be a full review. In fact, you can go to our in-depth review on Engadget.com and we've got a lot to say about it. We go through all the different changes, uh, the improvements, enhancements over Windows Phone 7 and Windows Phone 7.5. This video here is actually intended to look at the various elements of Windows Phone 8. You know, what makes it different and what are some of the unique features that we can see on it and what are some of the biggest changes that we have seen over Windows Phone 7.5 or Mango as they like to call it. This here is the HTC Titan 2. Now this is a device running Mango or it's also known as Windows Phone 7.5. Windows Phone 7 and 7.5, of course, have this uh, unique user interface called Metro, or not Metro anymore, it's modern. Uh, it's very easy for us to just slip into habit and, and call it Metro, of course. Now you take a look at this, and then you bring over the Windows Phone 8 interface, and as you can tell, it's full of live tiles, just as before. You uh, still have the same kind of information at your fingertips. The difference is you have a whole bunch of different sizes available to you and it also takes up a whole lot more screen space. Now the thing about the Titan 2 or any Mango device is that you have this black bar right here. Now it certainly adds for beautiful design but it's not quite effective when you're trying to go by Microsoft's mantra of glance and go. When you only have the capacity of up to eight live tiles up on the main screen when you're first viewing it without having to scroll or go to the app list. You know, that's that's a little bit troublesome because it, it ideally would be nice to have as much information as humanly possible. So it just seems like a whole bunch of wasted space, especially when you get up to screen sizes like 4.7 inch, where it's just like, what's the point of all this extra space? Um, certainly when you go into the apps, that's a different story. You can, uh, of course, utilize that that extra area. But when it comes to glance and go and you're taking a look at the start screen, it just makes a lot more sense to have the entire thing filled up. And you also have, uh, of course, the different sizes. Like we said, we have small, medium, and large. Now, now this is one of my favorite features of Windows Phone 8, uh, just simply because it allowed me to reprioritize a few things. So for example, you take a look here and you've got a huge, for let's say for messaging, okay, I've got three messages here, it's a huge box, I don't need to be taking up that much space to know that I have three messages. Some people like to have that large a size just because it's a little bit easier to press, right? Well, the nice thing is now you have the ability to pick and choose for yourself. So, uh, for example, my messaging box uh, on Windows Phone 8 is much smaller, so uh, I still see the three perfectly easy when it comes out in that way it doesn't have to take up a whole lot of extra space. The same goes with uh, toggle switches or things like the settings menu where I can just easily go in here and pull this up without any issues at all and it's not taking up a heck of a lot of unnecessary space. So what's great is now I can actually use all that extra space for stuff that makes more sense. So a live tile such as CNN down here uh, I can see the entire headline if I have it open to uh, basically the entire width of the phone. Developers can take advantage of this, of course, where you're required to have the medium and small sizes as a developer, uh, so that way people can pick and choose, but you can also have the option of going with a, uh, a large size tile. Now what you do, of course, you uh, long press the live tile, it, it starts hovering over the rest of the tiles, and you have this little arrow here, you just press it and it allows you to resize it and move it around however you'd like. Nothing to it. Same with, let's say, score center. I can bring that out there. Don't think I have any scores in there at the moment, so that's kind of boring. And it's still just as easy, without having that extra black bar, it's still just as easy for me to swipe over. And of course that little telltale, telltale arrow that shows you, hey, there's something to the right here, uh, is down there at the bottom right. Okay, so now I have all my different apps, and essentially this part is all the same. There's nothing new here in terms of user interface. 
and uh, frankly you go throughout the rest of the phone and most of it is going to be incredibly similar. So we won't go into uh, a lot of detail about the various changes to the uh, the UI itself because honestly Windows Phone is uh, certainly the same kind of experience. So what you saw on Windows Phone 7 is uh, ultimately what you're going to get on Windows Phone 8 just a little bit improved in terms of what kind of features are offered and, and things like that. Now we're going to take a look at the lock screen which is also a bit different. Uh, date and time and all the icons up here are all the same. Uh, ultimately you have the same icons down at the bottom that give you a number. Uh, say for example you have one email here, one text message, uh, one missed call, that kind of thing. But here's a few differences. Uh, here in this section where it used to be that only calendar appointments, your next calendar appointment would show up, now you have the choice. You don't have to go with the calendar appointment, you could go with your most recent email address. So in this case I got a message from, well, me. Because, let's face it, it's late on a Friday night, nobody's emailing me, so I just sent myself one for the purpose of this video. So hey, check out this Windows phone. So I can get a little idea of what the most recent message is, and I can say, okay, well, I want to go in and check it out. Now, uh, beyond that, down here where you have the notifications, that's still all the same, except now you can customize exactly what goes there. So let's go in here, lock screen. So here you have uh, five different areas, and uh, I have chosen for mine the, uh, my most popular in inbox, how many missed calls I have, messages, here's my less popular inbox, and uh, also I have Facebook here. Now this is a very important thing to point out, is that these, uh, the first four are basically for a, a certain set of applications. Like you can only have one app from a third party developer taking up space for notifications at the bottom of your lock screen. So in this case, really Facebook is the one third party and so all these other options ultimately need to take up the rest of the space. So I can still go in and customize and so third party apps will uh, definitely be able to take advantage of that but you have to pick and choose exactly what you want. Anybody huge on Facebook obviously will want to have something like this. Now in terms of the detailed status where the calendar notification used to be, now you can choose Gmail as well as a whole bunch of other options. So you're really not restricted as much to the kinds of details that you can see. So that's quite nice to have that handy. Um, another thing that you noticed here is that this has uh, some clouds and the weather up on top. Now this is part of the uh, live wallpaper that you've probably heard a little bit about with Windows Phone 8. And ultimately how it goes is third-party developers have access to uh, just throw in dynamically changing updates on the screen. So in this case, HTC has thrown in a weather app where the, uh, the wallpaper on the lock screen reflects the weather patterns at the time. Whatever weather condition you have right now is cloudy, of course. Uh, so that would change if it's raining or whatever. Now, uh, you can also see that it shows off the, uh, the, the weather, uh, the, the temperature, and all that fun stuff. So just basically it, it gives you a lot more information to just glance at. Now you can change that over to of course other apps. So we go back here into the lock screen and so for the background we could have it be several things. We could have it be Groupon, Facebook, Bing, Bing photo of the day for example, CNN headlines, so whatever the breaking news is at the time. That would show up on your lock screen. Kind of cool. Uh, Facebook, uh, all of your friends uh, sending you love, well there you go, right there on your lock screen. Now what I'm going to show you next is one of my absolute favorite parts of Windows Phone 8. Um, and this is something that you can't find in any of the other operating systems uh, as of this point. We'll see if it comes out in any future updates. But as of right now, me doing this video, uh, Windows Phone 8 has come out with an option for a guest user account. So now you can have more than one user. And this comes in really handy if you're a parent, you have kids, that you don't want them getting into your stuff and like just messing with your email, deleting a whole bunch of old messages and you know tweeting out all sorts of garbly gook. Uh, so 
what you can do now is you can set up what's called Kids Corner, where instead of swiping up, you're swiping to the right. So in this case, I have it for the kids. Um, of course, it can also be for all of your frat buddies if they uh, like to get into your phone and start messing with it. Well, now they're not able to because you can set up a password so they can't get into your account um, and they can just go into this guest user account. Right now, for my kids, I've set it up with a whole bunch of different games. So that way, if they ever get a hold of my phone, they can just swipe to the right, uh, swipe up, and uh, boom, here they are. They still have the ability to customize, and they can choose uh, colors, and uh, ultimately that's all they can customize, frankly, because uh, it's, it's pretty restricted. Um, calculator, well, my kids are probably never going to use that, but hey, I just threw it in there for, uh, for uh, video purposes. So now they can go in and uh, just play whatever games they want, no problem. And then when they're done, and I'm ready to use it, then I can go up. And all I have to do is just pop in my password, and I'm back into my own. So how this works is there's actually, let's see where it is. There's a live tile, and there's also a, an area in the settings where you can get this. Uh, so you go in, and you can set up. Uh, which games they, which games you want them to have access to, if you want them to have any music or videos, apps, the whole nine yards. Uh, essentially, you can just pick and choose what you want them to have access to. And then uh, that way, that's all they can play with, that's all they can use, and uh, it certainly is a lot of peace of mind on the part of any parents out there. So that's a huge thing that I really would love to see on Android and iOS at some point, so uh, hopefully that's in the works. You never know. One of the key improvements to Windows Phone 8 has been its hardware, and that's pretty crazy to think about because generally when you think of an OS upgrade, you're not thinking about having better hardware to go along with it. You're just looking at uh, a whole bunch of cool features like uh, new versions of Android and iOS usually boast, hey, we've got 200, 300, 5 gazillion new features. Uh, most of them you'll never even find. Now the thing about Windows Phone 8, or Windows Phone in general, I, I should rather say, is that Microsoft has restricted uh, the kinds of specs that uh, its phones are allowed to have. So, for example, the HTC Titan 2 uh, that we referenced earlier only has a WVGA screen. Now, for a 4.7-inch screen, that's, uh, that's not all that great. And you can definitely tell when you put it up against other 4.7-inch screens, let's say the HTC One X or the Galaxy S3, that both have 720p resolution. At least with Windows Phone 8, it's now uh, supporting multiple resolutions. Only three, but still it's much better because it's 720p and WXGA. Uh, so these two particular resolutions are now supported, and this means that you can look forward to a lot nicer experience in terms of uh, just viewing movies, photos, or like even your everyday web surfing or whatever. All of that is going to be better. Also, is going to be uh, it's also going to be faster because you have the multiple core support. Uh, of course, Microsoft only allowed single-core processors in its Windows phones before, whereas now you can have uh, anywhere between 2 and, well, 64. They're starting off small. Uh, Microsoft is allowing phones uh, to only have the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor. Uh, not a bad deal. It's a dual-core processor. Um, so still quite efficient, quite fast and much better than what I was doing before. We're not sure exactly when we're going to start seeing quad-core or anything like that in Windows phones, but at least the support is there, and uh, chances are we're going to start seeing it uh, sometime in the near future. Now the other thing, uh, there's a few other things actually. Uh, micro SD support, uh, the uh, Windows Phone 8X here, unfortunately doesn't have it. Um, must have been having to do something with uh, just the, the beautiful sleek design that HTC came out with. Um, we're definitely fond of this design, by the way. But microSD is certainly supported if, uh, if companies want to take advantage of that and throw it in there. The last additional piece of hardware support to talk about is NFC, also known as Near Field Communications. Typically, this is associated with mobile payments, where you stick your credit card information on your phone, and you go up to a payment station, and you can just tap your phone, and it magically 
makes the payment for you instead of having to dig your wallet out. So the thing is, NFC is so much more than that. There are plenty of other things that you can take advantage of. It's just a matter of whether or not Windows Phone 8 chooses to do that. Now, one of the new features uh, that's been added into the firmware is a wallet. Now, it's not a very original name, of course. Uh, we've seen Google's wallet. And it's actually very similar to that in terms of the mobile payment side. But there's also some elements of iOS Passbook in there as well. So, for example, you can have your AT&T account for app purchases, um, carrier billing, of course. You can also go in and throw in your own credit or debit card, gift cards, PayPal. Uh, you can even throw in uh, membership and loyalty cards uh, if you so desire. Another part of Wallet is the, the deals, where you can go in and uh, just be on the lookout for some awesome purchases. Now, I'm not much of a shopper myself, but man, $150 to spend on an outdoor sports team? Oh yes. Sold right there. So let's go in and you see uh, all the information, the terms, expiration. Uh, you can pin it to your start screen if you really want to keep a close eye on it. You can even have uh, reminders set so that way you don't miss out on the deal. So you've got that. It's, it's really not much to wallet at this point. The big thing is will third party developers take advantage of it and uh, really utilize it to, to its full potential. This is kind of like Passbook in that sense, where uh, it really wouldn't take off without these extra apps and services coming in and uh, being able to utilize this service. Now another part of NFC is the sharing aspect. So whether it's pictures, music, videos, um, contact information, let's say we go in here and let's go into this made up phone number I mean, it's real, call it, you'll enjoy it. Um, you go in, share contact, okay, make sure you got the right information, and then it's a matter of going in, tap and send. Doesn't help when I press the wrong button. So we'll do that one more time. Tap and send. Now we're gonna bring in the Galaxy S3 here, because that has the NFC capabilities. And there you go. So that's just uh, th that's a few things that the NFC can take advantage of. And uh, certainly as the technology evolves and third-party developers take advantage of it, we're going to see a lot more capabilities come out of it. So it's something definitely to look forward to. Um, so another nice thing about Windows Phone 8 there. Of course, the thing is, Android also has NFC capability, whereas iOS does not. So it's so there you have it. That's a brief synopsis of Windows Phone 8, some of the uh, user interface elements, as well as uh, some of the new features that you can look forward to. There are a lot more features, of course, uh, added into this. Uh, there's new Nokia Maps technology built into it, into all of the Windows Phone 8 devices, which means this HTC phone is actually using uh, Nokia mapping technology. Uh, so that's pretty interesting there. You can take advantage of the offline maps that uh, Nokia devices have been uh, known for for a very long time. So it uh, certainly makes it to be a nice improvement over the Bing maps that we had before. So that's, uh, of course, one of the other new capabilities. You also have iTunes syncing. So if you've been using iOS for the longest of times and you're just finally thinking, maybe I want to go with something else, at least now with uh, Windows Phone 8, it's all built in. You just simply need to go and get the, the proper companion app on your, win your Windows PC or your Mac. It just depends on exactly what OS you're running. Now, we have plenty more information on our in-depth review on Engadget.com. We go through all of the uh, major areas, uh, uh, all the major features, the big improvements, and heck, we've even thrown in a lot of the little ones too. So there's a lot to look at, a lot to read here. So uh, certainly we encourage you to go and check it out. And there you have it. This is Brad Mullen with Engadget looking at Windows Phone 8.